You know, we train in the simulator for unplanned emergencies, hoping they will never happen. But once in a great while, they do. Let's look at something that happened to a fellow pilot. Okay, Mitchell, South Dakota. And that's normal for de-ice. So uh, visibility is about a mile, 300 overcast. It's snowing. It's an icing takeoff. We've got our V-speeds posted. I've got uh, bleed air on, windshield, pedostatic, engine tail, wings. And we're going to 5,000. And Mitchell traffic, citation 396, Dunham Mike taking the active runway 31, northwest departure. Any traffic, please advise. All right, here we go. Power set. Airspeed's live. 70 knots. V1, rotate. And positive rate. Whoa, what? stick shaker. We're not, okay, airspeed. All right, OQ, pitch. Power set. No, it's okay, it's all right. Okay. Let's fly the airplane. Pitch. Stick shaker. Right. And uh, Minneapolis uh, 396 double mics out of 2.5 for 5,000. Citation 396 delta mics, climb maintain 5,000, right turn 360 or radar contact. And stand by on the turn 6 double mic. Okay. Under control, airspeed, pitch, power. Okay. One to go. All right. Oh, wow. Uh, Minneapolis uh, 396 Delta Mike, we are leveling 5,000. We can take that turn now. Citation 396 Delta Mike, right turn 360, climb maintain 10, 10,000. 360 and 10,000. 396 Delta Mike. Wow, that was altitude. That was something. Sometimes the unexpected happens. Right after gear retraction, I got a totally unexpected stick shaker. That's a real eye opener, especially departing in icing conditions, low IMC, and close to the ground. But I was expecting it. Can you imagine how you would have reacted if it had been you? Well, one person who knows exactly what it's like is sitting right next to me today, the chairman of the Citation Jet Pilots Organization, Mr. Tom Maboud. Tom, welcome. Hello, David. So, tell us about the tell us about the experience. Set up the scenario. What happened? Well, we were, my family and I, were returning from Mitchell, South Dakota to Minneapolis on a Sunday in November last fall, and it had been uh, cold. That day it was snow, light snow, a little wispy snow, 25 degrees. The plane had been on the ramp for a couple of days, so it was cold soaked. And I know pulling up to the plane with my wife and boys, it would be a chilly experience transitioning to uh, getting the airplane going. So I moved through the pre-flight pretty efficiently and got the plane uh, ready to go and everybody loaded up and we had a little bit of time from engine start to departure because it's an uncontrolled field. Right. It was a very low IMC day so uh, I had to pick up my clearance on the ground and during that time I thought a lot about the various aspects of the flight the departure what happens if and ran through our practices and got ready to go so well I'm sure it was totally unexpected what was the first thought that went through your mind and how did you what was your initial reaction to the stick shaker yeah well surprise of course and then immediately I was already transitioning to my instruments the gear came up, stick shaker came on, and having already transitioned, I could see the low speed cue coming up quickly, right. which was surprising. And yet, I cross checked against the standby and the co pilot PFD, and they all agreed that I was pitched up and speed was increasing. So I had a strong feeling that the AOA vein was stuck and or somehow misbehaving. And my thought was to get the plane away from the ground. <laughs> so right. I, I just kept pitched up and 
on power and, and kept on going. So I don't think I have, and you probably haven't. We've never trained for that. That's never that no, kind of scenario. Like we train for it with a, when we induce it ourselves with a high pitch angle yeah. with a stick shaker, but never right after a departure like that. So how did you use the training that you had received in order to get yourself out of that situation? Well, sure, I, yeah, sure, I'd never trained for anything like that, but, but over two decades of going to places like flight safety, and whether it was in a Bonanza or a Baron, a King Air, and now the second citation, the philosophy is the same. If you input certain things, pitch attitude and power settings, you're going to get a certain output. And uh, flying that way eliminates a lot of guesswork, you know, particularly in a moment of some kind of abnormal condition like this. So uh, I was able to have a lot of confidence that the plane was going in the right direction. And right. I could, well, even while hand flying, I could try and figure out what the problem was. Uh, so that was, you know, I guess the, the part of the training that really benefited me was all that repetition about flying by the numbers. I think some of us take for granted the stall system and the checks and the, I know some airplanes, the heat, various parts of the system are heated with, when you turn the battery on, some airplanes when you turn the pitot static, some are parts of it in each one. How has this incident changed the way you pre-flight that system? <laughs> well, I can tell you that angle of attack vane looks like Wheel of Fortune when I get to it now. It, I spin it around pretty good. And that's, you know, if I'm chagrined about anything, it's it's that my pre-flight action had deviated from the checklist. It says free and hot. And I had been gotten to the point where I was just grabbing the AOA vane and not really swinging it through its motion. And had I done that, I might have either dislodged it from being stuck or found out that it was stuck. And that would have caused you know, investigation on the ground instead of, you right. know, in the clouds at 200 feet or whatever. I noticed when I flew this scenario, I forgot to raise the flaps, takeoff flaps. I understand you did the same I thing. I sure did. I sure did. And that's another item that uh, was a takeaway for me is in the heat of the battle, I didn't return to the checklist and I didn't do my full after takeoff checklist. And sure enough, coming through 10,000 feet, I'm wondering why I'm climbing. So at a slow indicated airspeed and yeah those flaps will slow you down but that's that's pretty minor compared to what you had to go yeah. through so yeah. this has been a really really enlightening discussion and we really appreciate you coming in and being willing to share to all our members because uh, these things uh, can be very serious and the, the takeaway that I've gotten here is that we can get out of these things we can use our training we can use the things we've learned and uh, to make a safe uh, ending for something that could have been serious well, thanks, David. Thanks, thanks glad so to much. be here. Great. Okay, thanks. With CJP's input, our platinum partner, Flight Safety Textron Aviation Training, is developing new simulator training modules that highlight actual events that our members have experienced. Two years ago, they developed single pilot line oriented simulator training or loss scenarios to support CJP training requests to experiencing more challenging and realistic single pilot operations. These scenarios enable pilots to enhance their skills with targeted aircraft specific training in a controlled environment supplemental to their traditional initial and recurrent training. The scenarios meet the requirements of the CJP Gold Standard Safety Award. If you have an event that you would like to share so that others can learn, reach out to us at safety at citationjetpilots.com.